I am not exaggerating when I say the strategy you're about to learn in this guide may just be the most broken, overpowered strategy in the history of League of Legends. And here's why. You see, when it comes to playing in ranks diamond and below, there's a sort of catch-22 that's going on. Most challenger players and coaches know that some of the strongest champions in those ranks are mobile assassins. If you've ever seen a challenger player smurf on Evelyn or Zed, they pretty much just run over the game. And yet, recommending these lower rank players to actually play Zed or Evelyn would be a pretty big mistake. This is because they simply won't have the mechanics and skill necessary to pilot these types of assassins to make use of them the same way that a challenger smurf would. And that's the catch-22. What high-level players find to be the strongest champions in these lower ranks are actually bad when players in those actual ranks play them. In reality, the strongest champions in ranks diamond and below are the ones that are very powerful and yet require minimal mechanical skill. And I have quite literally found what is the most brain dead, easy to pilot champion while also being literally the strongest champion on the current patch. So who is it? Well, it's Mordekaiser. Not top lane though, Mordekaiser jungle. Don't believe me? Well, check this out. Here I am playing Mordekaiser in gold elo. It is 21 minutes in the game and I'm going to literally just run it down mid into the entire enemy team by myself. Now, I am not showing you this clip to show off. Uh, quite the opposite. It's actually to show you just how brain dead this is. I literally miss my E, I don't dodge any skill shots, I then mess up my ultimate by timing it when Kled dismounts so I'm taking unnecessary damage. Then, as I finally come out of my ultimate, I miss my E on Yasuo, and then I miss my Q on Twitch. Shortly after, I then whiff my E again. For those keeping track, I haven't landed a single one. I then quite literally get hit by every single skill shot from every champion. I have dodged nothing. And in the end, I get a pentakill 1v5 and then end the game. This is the power of Mordekaiser right now. You can have no mechanics at all and literally 1v5 carry the game. Alright, so maybe you still don't believe me and think this was just a one-off clip. Well, as I was testing this strategy on a gold account, I literally couldn't lose, while having an insane KDA and nearly averaging 200 CS per game. And I'm sure, still, some of you may not believe me. Maybe it's just because I'm a challenger in gold and 6 games really isn't that much. Well, check this out. If you sort by highest win rate for junglers in bronze, Mordekaiser is insanely far ahead in the number one spot with 57.37% win rate. Raise the rank to silver and he's still number one with a 57.36% win rate. Again, raise it to gold, and he's still number one, with a 56.42% win rate. If we then sort it by all games platinum and higher, he's still number one, with a 54.22% win rate. So I'm not lying to you when I say Mordekaiser Jungle is literally the strongest champion you can play right now in Diamond and below. Nothing else comes close. And, lucky for you, I'm going to walk you through step by step exactly how to execute this strategy. Still, you may not be convinced. Some of you may be saying, hold on, didn't Mordekaiser just get nerfed on patch 12.23? Well, yes, he did. And guess what? This is actually fantastic news for this strategy. You see, we went and tested those nerfs and compared them to the previous patch. The difference in your opening full clear is, well, nothing. And that's because the nerf restricts the maximum damage per second your passive will do to jungle camps. And that simply doesn't come into play in the early game as your passive won't do enough damage at that point. Instead, this nerf will really only impact the damage you'll be doing to epic monsters like Baron and Dragon much later in the game. This is because your passive does damage based on the enemy's maximum health, and these monsters obviously have a high amount of maximum health. And so the good news is, it really doesn't impact the strategy you're about to learn. And another reason why I say these nerfs are such good news is that on patch 12.22, Mordekaiser only has a 5.9% pick rate. That is only the 11th most popular jungler, despite literally being the strongest champion on the patch. There is no way the pick rate would stay that low as more players realize how overpowered he is. However, with a nerf from Riot, this will cause players to overestimate just how significant of a nerf it is. I mean, his win rate in bronze literally went from 57.37% to 55.03%. Yeah, he's still broken. And so now his pick and ban rate will drop, making him even easier for you to lock in and abuse for free LP. Also, if you've tried picks like this before, but didn't see the results you were expecting, it's because you're making just a few simple mistakes that can be easily fixed. That's why we made the extra effort of creating an entire course where we reviewed players diamond and below executing this strategy you're about to learn in order to pinpoint exactly what they were doing wrong. So if you end up finding this guide valuable, and trust me, you will then unlocking the full course is an absolute game changer. We also have a limited time discount link in the comment section below. And we're the only service that provides rank insurance, where if you don't improve while actively using Skillcapped, you can claim a full refund. 
so make sure to check us out after this. All right, now let's jump straight into the guide. So everything starts at, well, the start of the game. And for this, you're going to run the exact same opening route every single game. You're going to want to start on the bottom side of the map and then just simply full clear your entire jungle into the top side. The reason why this is so powerful is that Mordekaiser has an insanely fast clear speed and in the preseason patch, Riot buffed farming junglers massively. For one, all monsters now give an additional 15 experience. For two, every single jungle camp became tankier as they've all been given more health. This means that Mordekaiser, whose passive does damage based on maximum health, isn't impacted by these tankier camps and clears them insanely fast while other junglers will clear slower. Three, Krugs got insanely buffed as you can now clear them super fast even though they give the most golden experience of any camp. Four, Rift Scuttle now spawns at 3.30 instead of 3.15, meaning you aren't punished for full clearing since you'll always arrive at the Scuttle in time to contest it. Five, camps now do a lot more damage than before, but Mordekaiser has one of the healthiest clears in the game due to his W shield and heal that you unlock at level three. In fact, it's important you don't consume a health pot during your clear and instead save it for the possible fight over the scuttle. And finally, the change to jungle pets means your smite upgrades are now gated based on how many camps you clear, not how many times you smited like last season. This means junglers who can power farm like Mordekaiser will unlock their pet upgrades way sooner. This is why you'll just want to full clear every single game. Now, starting bot side is done for an important reason that will make sense shortly, but first I need to explain a few other steps. Once you finish your gromp and are done full clearing, you have to ask whether or not you will win the fight at the scuttle that spawns at 3.30. Here's the thing, Mordekaiser is insanely strong at level four and will pretty much beat everyone short of hyper powerful early game duelers like Warwick or Trundle. In this game, I'm facing Zack, who's no threat early, so I go for the scuttle. I recommend when trying out this strategy, literally just go for the scuttle every time. You will win it 90% of the time and it will help you learn the matchups. With that being said though, if you're in a scenario where you know you can't take that scuttle, simply recall after you take your gromp, purchase items, and head to the bot side scuttle. Now that the scuttle spawns later at 3.30, you'll be able to make it to the bottom scuttle with an item advantage and prevent yourself from being double scuttled. Anyways, like I said, 90% of the time you will win the scuttle because you're just that strong early. Also, don't worry, I'll be showing you examples of games where I'm not able to get the scuttle and where things just go horribly wrong. I'm just showing you the most standard scenario to start. Now, right after you take the scuttle, you want to head bot side to take the scuttle there. Again, same idea as before. If you know you can't take that bottom scuttle, either because of the matchup or lack of priority in nearby lanes, you just simply recall at this point, buy some items and head to your Krugs. In this case, the enemy mid lane and bot lane were low in health and Zack, like nearly every jungler, is no threat to Mordekaiser at level four, and so I'm able to get the double scuttle. It's safe to say that over 50% of your games, you'll be able to get this double scuttle as your opener. Now, here is where things get really crazy though. After you double scuttle the enemy, you actually don't recall. You see, Mordekaiser doesn't have the greatest early buys. He can really only buy an amp tome for a damage increase, and that amount of AP really just boosts your damage by a small amount. So instead, when you double scuttle, you just want to go straight into a second full clear without recalling. You can see how Mordekaiser is unique in that his base stats are just so strong you can easily clear camps without the need for other items. Keep in mind, most other junglers have to recall for items so that they can clear the second rotation effectively. It's very important that you understand during the second full clear, you don't react to anything. You lack items and the crux of the strategy involves an important timing coming up. Now, after you finish your Gromp, you'll recall, you'll have enough gold to buy the item Leeching Leer, a pink ward, and two health pots. Additionally, make sure you have a sweeping lens. At this point, you'll want to head straight to Dragon. Make sure that you use both health potions as you take the Dragon, and use your W to keep yourself as healthy as you can while you clear it. So this all sounds great, but I know some of you guys are skeptical and are thinking that it won't be as easy in your own games. This is why I'm going to show you multiple different scenarios of this opening route. In this game, I'm facing Hecarim. I execute the same opener of starting bot side into a full clear. Now, at the end of my clear, I activate the Scryer's Bloom and literally see Hecarim topside coming to contest the scuttle after he cleared his Krux. And yet, despite this, for whatever reason, I hold my smite and get the scuttle stolen from me like a complete noob. This is good though, as it will show you how to recover from when things go wrong. After this, a 2v2 breaks out mid and you get your first example of just how strong Mordekaiser is at level four. Keep in mind, our plan will still stay the same after this fight. Get that second scuttle, don't recall, and instead head straight into our second full clear. Now, as I've taught you, we should be recalling at this point and head to Dragon. Remember, we have no items, so going to do something like steal Raptors here is just a total unnecessary risk, and only a complete idiot would do that. Well, look at that. I just inted a kill over to Hecarim for free. This actually lets Hecarim hit level six while I'm still level five. Well, that death has kind of just acted like a recall, so now we're able to buy our Leeching Leer. 
and usually we'd want to just head straight to Dragon as we taught you, but given that our mid died and we lack priority there, and Hecarim is a level above us, a variation you'll want to do in this scenario is take your red first. This will give you enough experience to hit level 6. Now we go into the Dragon Pit as per our standard plan. You can see Hecarim even shows up and considers contesting it, but if he jumps in, I'm just going to ult him, which prevents him from smiting the dragon, and I'll kill him 1v1. And for those of you worried that we don't actually win the 1v1, well, shortly after a fight breaks out, and you can see how just insanely easy it is to kill the enemy jungler as Mordekaiser. With all that being said, I'm sure some of you are still skeptical and may think this was still too easy of a game. But don't worry, as later on, I'm going to show you an example of what to do when everything goes wrong. For now though, I want to talk about what the next step is after you've secured the dragon. So, once you've taken the dragon, the Rift Herald will be spawning topside. Remember when I said there's a reason why we start botside every game? Well, this is it. It allows us to double full clear into the dragon timing, and then sets us up to full clear for a third time into the Rift Herald spawn. The reason why this works is that very few junglers can keep up with our clear speed, and so we're able to hit all these timings at objectives while being ahead in farm. Simultaneously, Mordekaiser is just a very strong champion 1v1, and so almost no jungler can 1v1 you at these objectives anyways. You can see how after my full clear, I immediately take Rift Herald, and again, I'm actually hoping the enemy jungler tries to contest this, as he will have no chance of winning the fight. At the same time, you clear objectives so fast with your max HP damage, it's pretty hard for them to even get to the Rift Herald in time to contest. For context, at the end of this opener, I am ahead 25 CS and 1 level over Hecarim, while also having killed a dragon and Rift Herald. You can see the exact same follow-up in this game. I hit my dragon timer, but in this game I see Zac top, so I know I can steal some of his camps. After I do that, I'm back into my third full clear as I pass towards the Rift Herald spawn. Keep in mind, of course, we're not arriving at the Rift Herald at the exact second that it spawns, so in theory the enemy jungler could take it. The problem for them is that if they commit to taking the Rift Herald during this time, well, they'll be leaving their entire jungle alive. This will allow us to get super far ahead and farm while they slowly kill the Rift Herald. We'll actually have an example of this coming up shortly. Again, you can see how effective this opener is as we're ahead a Dragon, a Rift Herald, and ahead one level and 94 CS to Zac 70. We also literally have the most gold in the entire game with 4900. Now, the vast majority of your game should end up exactly as we just laid out, but I want to show you an example of what to do when the game plan simply won't work. So here I'm on the red team this time, so I start bot side, and I even don't get a leash, but none of that matters with Mordekaiser jungle. Now's a good time to tell you guys you'll want to use your first smite on either the Krugs if you start at your red, or the Gromp if you start at your blue. You'll then want to save your smite for after you've full cleared, in case you get contested at the topside scuttle so you can use smite to secure it. Alright, so in this game, you'll notice that Leeson started at his blue, and so is pathing away from us at the start of the game. When this happens, there's no way to double scuttle the enemy, since they'll be able to kill it as soon as it spawns at 3 minutes and 30 seconds. This is why after you full clear, you then just take the scuttle nearby, and you want to immediately recall. However, our plan still remains the same. We want to full clear a second time, and then recall again, get our leeching leer, and head to dragon. You'll notice something though, as I'm at my Krugs, I see Leeson gank bot side. This is a very common scenario when you start on opposite sides as a jungler, as often when you're clearing one side of the map, the enemy jungler is clearing on the opposite side. So if you find yourself in scenarios like this, don't make the mistake of clearing Krugs and then recalling and heading to Dragon. Mainly because by Lee Sin ganking bot side, he now has control over the Dragon, and so there's no guarantee that we'll get there in time before he kills it. That's okay though, because the backup plan is to simply get a massive farm lead. So we just invade the enemy's topside jungle, and steal his camps to punish him for ganking bot. Keep in mind, during this time Lee Sin is able to take the first Dragon, however, because we've been power farming and stole his jungle, we have 57 CS to his 36, and are massively far ahead. This effectively represents the backup plan. If we lose control over that dragon play early, well then we want to make sure to counter jungle and power farm to get insanely strong. Now do keep in mind the rest of our game plan still stays the same. We recall here with the plan of doing a full clear for our third rotation into that Rift Herald spawn. In this case though, I see a free kill mid, but regardless we then want to pivot immediately into that full clear after. Again, while I full cleared, Leeson actually took the Rift Herald, but remember what we said earlier, that's fine, as if they take Rift Herald, it means they're leaving all their camps up and will get an insane farm lead. In this case, I'm ahead 31 CS at this point, with 82 to 51. Now, it's important we recall here to spend our gold so we can leverage that farm lead into an item lead. And once I leave base, my goal is simple, there's no objectives on the map anymore, and I've acquired a massive farm lead over Lee Sin due to him going for these objectives while his camps were still up. In fact, I'm actually two levels ahead of him. So now is the time you want to look for invades to then punish the enemy jungler. You can see, I take his red, Lee Sin tries to fight but literally has no chance at winning because, well, I'm Mordekaiser with a giant farm lead. I then make sure to steal his nearby raptors, and follow it up with an efficient transition gank on mid lane to then invade his topside camps. 
This is how you want to punish someone who steals away the objectives from you prior to your timers. You simply get a farm lead and then invade once you're far ahead enough. And although we lost that first dragon in Rift Herald, we now have enough of a lead that the enemy jungler has no chance at securing the second dragon. You can see how Leeson doesn't respect my lead, and so it results in an easily won teamfight and dragon. So, to quickly recap, your opener is pretty much always the same. You want to start bot side, full clear, and look to double scuttle if possible, otherwise you'll recall at the timings we mentioned. You then do a second full clear, making sure to recall immediately after Gromp. You will then have your Leeching Leer power spike, and can easily solo dragon without taking any damage after which you then want to full clear, looking to take Rift Herald at the end. Now, after you take this Rift Herald, things become a bit less cookie cutter. You still have one main goal, secure that second dragon. However, you no longer can full clear on cooldown and hit that timing. For example, in this game, you can see I take Rift Herald, and then I recall and leave base and head to my Krugs that are spawning. The enemy Graves unfortunately tries to gank bot, but just ends up jumping the wall straight to his death. We then head to our Raptors, and at this point, I could just continue full clearing towards topside. However, keep in mind, we've full cleared three times already, so we're pretty far ahead, and so we want to be on the lookout for plays to make. In this case, I see my mid laner super overextended mid taking tower plates, and so I anticipate Hecarim is likely coming to either cover the lane or gank him. I also see it as an opportunity to place the Rift Herald down and get some plates of my own. In the end, you can see how we successfully protected our mid laner, but it came at the expense of farming those top camps. If we now go top to farm those camps, well, then we won't be at Dragon at the time of its respawn, and could lose it to Hecarim. So this is a perfect highlight of a tactic you can use to secure these follow-up dragons. You want to try and gank lanes prior to the dragon spawning to secure yourself lane priority. In this case, I see bot lane pushed up, so I look to gank bot, but they have it warded and so they back off safely. In these spots, you can then look for in-between moves, that is, instead of just sitting around waiting for dragon to spawn or for that gank bot side, we can just take our red buff, then look to gank bot lane again or take the dragon once it spawns. In this case, a fight then breaks out bot side, so we just peel off that in-between move to immediately react, as by winning the fight, we'll secure the dragon. Unfortunately, they get away, and my mid laner just recalled. Again, we want to look for that in-between move while we wait for our mid laner to get back. So, we finish grabbing our red, and with our mid laner back in lane, we then take the second dragon. Now, at this point, we have an almost identical strategy that we used after we took the first dragon. We want to pass towards the Rift Herald that's going to spawn. The thing is, though, that you'll have a much longer timer before it spawns after you take the second dragon. This means you can read the map and be more versatile instead of just immediately full clearing towards topside. For example, in this game, I see my mid laner invade Hecarim, so I just follow him after Dragon. With Hecarim then dead, it makes sense to counter jungle his Wolves and his Gromp. Additionally, I spot Nami mid with Graves, meaning Jin is by himself bondside. So now I have a really easy tower dive after Gromp. This then leads to a winning teamfight breaking out shortly after. The point is, you can see how you can adapt during this time based on the map. However, once I see the Rift Herald will be respawning again, I immediately pass towards it. In this case, if I make the mistake of full clearing, I'm not going to get to the Rift Herald in time as it respawns, so I do a nice trick called One Quadrant Farming. By clearing my top quadrant only, I still make sure those camps have their respawn timers synced together. And at the same time, it allows me to then get the Rift Herald right as it respawns. And this is pretty much our game plan for the rest of the game. In between the Rift Herald and Dragon spawns, you adapt and read the map accordingly. Just make sure you show up on their spawn timers. And I really want to emphasize to play aggressive around these timers, you're going to be way stronger than you realize at first, so you need to limit test. There will be close fights you lose or win, but trust me, if you play out the early game as we've just laid out, you'll be insanely strong in these fights, so the majority of the time, they'll go in your favor. If you know you played the early game well and have a lead, then force those fights around the objective spawns. That's really the key to snowballing the game and winning as Mordekaiser. You don't want to be scared and passively farm just because they aren't giving you objectives for free. Now, once Baron spawns, things change. You see, Mordekaiser is really good at taking Baron. In fact, you can actually solo it, assuming you're at three items. This is what's unique about Mordekaiser. You can take objectives like Baron with relative ease. And with how strong we are, we actually want to force the enemy to fight us over this Baron. And if they don't, well, we take the objective for free. Again, because of how we played out the early game, we're ahead. And so if a fight does break out, we'll obviously win it. Now, if you're not so far ahead that you can just force Baron, then you want to be on the lookout for number advantages. For example, in this game, it's 21 minutes, Baron is now on the map. However, despite me being ahead, my team as a whole is behind. I see my Trindomir splitting bot side, and so I wait in this brush anticipating that someone from the enemy team may rotate from mid through river and allow me to get a pick on one of them. It doesn't seem to be happening though, so I start my recall to spend my gold, but then I spot Riven bot side. As soon as I see her, I now know it's a 4v4 in mid lane, and I have Trindomir rotating to mid lane faster than Riven. So basically, it's going to be a number advantage fight, since Trindomir can get here first. And here's what's really great about Mordekaiser. You can just pop your ghost and start the fight quite easy. You can see how I literally just run into the entire enemy team, and as soon as they turn on me, I just ult their support to kill her for free. 
Then, once I come out of my alt, Trinomir has arrived and it's a 5 versus 3 since Riven is still bot side. And of course, right after this, I make sure to immediately look to take the Baron off this winning fight. And there's really not that much more to this strategy macro-wise, from this point forward you just look to fight around objective timers. It's really all about executing that early game strategy we've outlined, then that turns you into a raid boss that can force fights around objectives for the rest of the game. However, since teamfighting is such an important part of the strategy, I think it's pretty important to outline how to actually teamfight with Mordekaiser. Now, there's one thing that you should be aware of when teamfighting as Mordekaiser, especially earlier on in the game. It's that Mordekaiser often wants to play around his cooldowns, especially in teamfights or when you're taking on multiple enemies. You can see here, I'm actually 1 versus 3 against the enemy team. If I just run at them, I'll get myself killed, so instead, I want to play almost like a poke mage. I'm kiting back and looking to land my Q and E from a distance. Not only is this because your E and Q can just simply do a ton of damage, but also because you want to stack up your shield passive with your damage. You can see by playing it slow around my cooldowns, I'm able to get my passive shield fully stacked. And it's now that I can brute force with my ghost and commit to the all-in. You can't always just run in and be a raid boss. If you're outnumbered or against fed enemies, or just simply don't have enough items, you want to play it slower and more of an in and out playstyle with your cooldowns. Here's another example. We just finished Baron, and I look to engage with my full shield passive stacked up. Often when you do this, you'll get turned on pretty fast. When this happens, you need to ult a target to prevent yourself from dying, while also swinging the fight in your favor by getting the kill on them. You can see as I come out of my ultimate, I look to land an E on Nami to kill her, but she flashes away. At this point, my E, W, and Q are on cooldown, so I make sure to walk away while I'm waiting for my cooldowns. Then, my Q comes back up, so I turn on Lucian as he face checks the brush. I get ulted by Lee Sin, and again, everything is on cooldown, so I'm just running away. Then, as soon as my Q, W, and E come back off cooldown, I turn and immediately re-engage to kill Lee Sin. Again, now that I've killed him, everything is on cooldown, so I default back into running. I try to use the brush to be able to land a Q. Once it's on cooldown, I then kite back further. Then all my abilities are back off cooldown, so I look to engage. Unfortunately, I miss, so again, I try to run and buy time for cooldowns. Keep in mind, I originally engaged this fight 2v3. I was able to kill Riven, get Nami's Flash, and then kill Lee Sin. At that point, I was in a 1v3, and if I was able to land my E and dodge the bind, I definitely could have won it. Regardless, I wasted so much of the enemy's time by playing around my cooldowns that my teammate Lissandra was actually able to just end the game. Now, that tip is great for smaller skirmishes and such, but when it comes to just straight up 5v5 teamfights, there are essentially two ways you'll normally fight it. First is fighting front to back. This means peel with your own backline and focus their frontline. You want to do this when it's simply not realistic to just run at the enemy's backline. For example, in this scenario, we have an enemy Shaco who's able to place down boxes, and the enemy Velkaz has crowd control with his Q slow and knockback. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to pop Ghost and try to run at them, especially given how safe Velkaz is playing. However, the enemy does engage, so I simply help focus down the front line with my back line to protect them. Then, once they're dead, you can see how I still have my ult up, and so the cleanup becomes very easy on the squishy targets after. The alternative to the style of fighting would be to fight back to front, meaning diving the enemy back line at the start of the fight. I find it's best to do this when you have a flank angle on the enemy and can get behind them. You can see in this instance I'm able to rotate to get behind the enemy squishies and it becomes incredibly easy to kill them by popping ghosts and ulting them. One of the biggest issues you'll run into though is when you're trying to siege and the enemy team is turtling, since in this case you'll have no flank angles. In these moments it's very important to play patient, you basically want to bait the enemy to engage on you. You can see how in this instance there's a lot of walking back and forth, dodging poke, and looking for openings to damage the inhibitor. It's only once the enemy engages on my backline do I then pop Ghost and go after their backline. In this instance, Shaco is dead at the start of this fight, and Zack and Lucian are simply no threat to four of my teammates by themselves. So, as long as I zone their backline by running at them, they really have no chance at winning this fight. If instead the enemy had a fed assassin like a Zed, along with a Zack, well then I would consider saving my ult for when Zed engages to kill him and protect my own backline. Alright, now all that's left for you to learn is Mordekaiser's runes and build. For his runes, you want to take Conqueror as your primary with Triumph, Legend, Tenacity, and Last Stand. Conqueror helps you become that crazy DPS healing raid boss. Legend Tenacity is also quite important so you don't get kited. For your secondary runes, you want to go into Resolve and grab Conditioning and Revitalize. Conditioning will give you tanky scaling, while Revitalize helps a ton at boosting your healing and the shield from your W. Your skill order is straightforward, put your first point in Q, your second one in E, and the third one in W. You then max Q first, E second, and W third, and put a point in your ultimate whenever you can. For summoner spells, you want to take Ghost and Smite. You absolutely need Ghost to chase down players. Without it, you'll be like half as strong, so don't make the mistake of taking Flash. Now, the build is what's really important, as there are a lot of different builds floating around on Mordekaiser, and if you build him wrong, you'll be way weaker. First, make sure your starting pet is the blue Gustwalker Gate. I know it's tempting to go for the damage from Scorchclaw or the shield and tenacity from Moss Stomper, but I promise you the movement speed you get from Gustwalker makes your teamfighting around objectives so much easier as it effectively acts as a permanent ghost as you run through the brushes. 
for your first item, you want to build a Rift Maker. This is the key item that makes you an insane raid boss in teamfights with the healing and damage it provides. Now, there's only one alternative to purchasing a Rift Maker, which is to build the new item Jack Show instead. This will make you far tankier. However, with how overpowered Jack Show is at the moment, we fully expect Riot to nerf it in the next patch. I recommend trying out both options and seeing which one you prefer. They're both extremely strong, one just has more damage, while the other one gives you a lot more tanky stats, so you really can't go wrong. You then either want to build plated steel caps or merc treads based on the enemy team comp. Don't make the mistake of building sork shoes. We aren't going raw AP here. We're going for a bruiser AP tank build. Trust me, you will have plenty of damage. After this, you then want to build a Rylai's Crystal Scepter. This item is a very big power spike, as once you have it, your abilities will slow enemies, so literally no one can kite you when you pop Ghost and ult them. We then build Demonic Embrace. This will give you an insane amount of DPS while giving you even more health. This will be all the damage you need, so after this, you want to go into tank items. If you're against mixed damage compositions, then simply build a Thornmail into Spirit Visage. If you're going against heavy AD compositions, then build Thornmail into Sunfire Aegis. And if you're against heavy AP, then build Spirit Visage into Force of Nature. And that's it. Mordekaiser is absolutely insane scaling and becomes a super tanky, high DPS, high burst, unkillable raid boss. So even if you fall behind early, you can always power farm your way into a late game 1v9 carry with this build. And lastly, make sure you ban Master Yi every single game. He's the only champion that outscales Mordekaiser and can shut him down 1v1. So make sure you ban him. It's a requirement for the strategy to work. And don't forget, if you've tried picks like this before, but didn't see the results you were expecting, it's because you're making just a few simple mistakes that can be easily fixed. That's why we made the extra effort of creating an entire course where we reviewed players diamond and below executing this strategy to pinpoint exactly what they were doing wrong. So if you found this guide valuable, then unlocking the full course is an absolute game changer. We also have a limited time discount link in the comment section below. And we're the only service that provides rank insurance where if you don't improve while actively using skill capped, you can claim a full refund. So click the link in the description below to start improving fast. All right, now get out there and start farming that free LP. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.